Okay. Uh, hi, internet people. Uh, welcome to Mediaverse Podcast. My name is Chris. We cover media stuff and verse stuff and other things. Uh, joining me as always today is the one and only Kyle. How are you, sir? Good, good. I have started a uh, sort of a spinoff podcast for a local game store. So I just did a bunch of interviews with the local Smash players. So I put a link down below if you guys want to check that out. It was really fun. You get to talk to them more than just about Smash. Like I got to talk to them about a bunch of other things too, too, like their favorite games and stuff that's outside of Smash or just stuff, you know, fun stuff like that. But it's all good though. Nice. Uh, on today's podcast, we will be talking about the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo, uh, and as well as news topics. Uh, the discussion of Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo is not really a discussion of which one's better, just to let you know. It's kind of more of a discussion about experiences playing the system, because both me and Kyle probably started gaming on these things. We were, like, really little, though. Uh, yep. But, you know, we're not really talking about which one's better, just gaming experiences to let you know. Um yep. Because we all know which one's better, PlayStation, but that's not in the same uh, generation. But anyway, Kyle, why don't that you might start be us? For another, that might be for another day. But anyway, Kyle, why don't you start us with the news? Well, we can start off with the first thing first. Flash is getting a new director and a new writer, apparently. Yes, Flash is uh, apparently going to get the director of it, Andy Muschietti, who is currently in talks to direct the new Flash movie, which I believe this makes the fourth director of this project. Right? I didn't even hear, like, yeah, I didn't even hear about the, I didn't even hear about the Horrible Boss, the guys who did Horrible Boss or something leaving. Yeah, like, uh, well, this just came out. Um, also, the new script for the movie, which... It's kind of weird because according to this article, it says that Ezra Miller is going to remain playing The Flash. However, they're getting a new script written by Christina Hudson. She wrote Bumblebee, and she's also the writer of the Birds of Prey movie coming out uh, next year. So this is weird. What do you think of uh, Andy Muschietti? Have you seen any of his work? I seen it and I love the first it movie like that he did for the movies like it was very good very scary I saw it with our friend Matt and it was real it was very good like it had that horror suspense and everything everything that and it's definitely better than the TV shows TV shows it does its own little thing although it does kind of go remember the 90 remember the 80s a little bit here and there but doesn't go like in your face about it like, it's like, oh, here's a nice little little thing on the side, you know? Remember yeah. Batman? It's right over there. It's not like, remember Batman in the theaters? Yeah, I remember Batman. Hmm. Like, I like stuff like that. It's like, just let you know when it's, what time that happened. I guess. But he did, and his new fit, and the new it looks really insane. So. Yeah, looks good. I think they're, I think, I don't know what they're trying to do with him. Is they're trying to do some type of Flashpoint vibe again. And the writer, I did enjoy Bumblebee so much. So if she did a good job with this film, I probably have no quarrels with that. I can't say anything about Bird Prey because I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, well, nobody has. Um, do you, you notice a trend happening at Warner Brothers? Uh, this is the third horror director that they've got to make one of these DC movies. I know James Wong. Who is the other one? Uh, the director of Shazam is from horror movies as well. Oh, that would make sense. That would make sense for that gruesome scene with the seven deadly sins killing Lionel Luthor. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I meant, I meant, uh, I meant uh, his. I meant uh, that villain's dad. Right. Yeah. But uh, that makes sense right there. Like yeah. it made sense when I heard Aquaman with James Wong. Like I was like, nah, I get it. It makes sense with the ocean. Right. Um. Have you know? Actually, did, did you know they got a new CEO? By Warner Brothers? Is it a CEO or just a head of like studio? No, it's a new CEO. The new one, the old one, left after some 
Very controversial stuff happened. Oh uh, no, I didn't. Yeah, she's she's right now evaluating everything right now from Warner Brothers. Interesting. Yeah, that's I just remembered since we're talking since we're on the topic of WB right now. Right. All right. So the next one should be Lord of the Rings got a series director, which is going to be the guy who directed uh, Jurassic Park: The Fallen Kingdom. Uh, I thought he was just directing the first two episodes, but I could be wrong. It's a uh, J. A. Biona, right? Yeah. 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 B. U. B. A. Y. O. N. A. Yeah. Biona. Um. I mean, Amazon has spent a ton of money on this. Oh yeah. I don't know how much money each episode is gonna cost, but didn't they already spend like something like a hundred million dollars to get this like property? Yeah, they did. Just the property alone and then making it. Yeah. So this should be interesting. I wonder if it will cover what the movies covered and then will it go into like you know weirder stuff after the lord of the rings or is it gonna take place where the movies left off and start doing somarillia who knows yeah i mean i've been hearing this might be a prequel so Would... really yeah a prequel before the hobbit i'm like okay probably do their own little thing who knows hmm. That'd be weird. it would make character. more sense if they did a continuation from the Lord of the Rings, just because that continuation exists, yeah. even though it's super complicated apparently to read. Yeah, that would be a hard thing to do on television. Well, I more... mean, it would be easier to do on television than no, like I a meant movie. on film. Sorry. Yeah. That's the other way around. Yeah. But yeah. Well, we got some comic news now. Next, uh, Walking Dead is ending after sixteen years. I've never read the comic. So you're going to yeah. have to talk on this, but it's been going for a long time, huh? Yeah, 16 years. Like, this is, like, one of the things that started the AMC show, The Walking Dead. We don't really talk about that on here because, like, first I didn't watch it. I used to watch it. I kind of fell off right around season five because, like, after season four, that was just filler things. Like, oh, got to tie up this loose knot, and we got to set up everything else. And I'm like, uh, do I really want to watch the show more? And then the season started progressing and progressing, and I just kind of fall out. I did stay tuned for the Negan stuff, just for the first appearance, and he did not disappoint on that. But it's after, and they killed off the main character before ending the series. So, and this happened in the show. Spoiler alert! I thought Sorry. they didn't kill that character off. He just went away to make like movies, uh, like in the Walking Dead universe. Yeah, he did, but they killed him. Yeah, but they killed now. They're killed. They killed him in the comic books now, officially. Oh, so he's dead in the comics, but he's not technically dead in the show. He just went away. Yeah, they just think he's dead, dead. Right. The cast, you know. But yeah, but yeah, like I think this is interesting. He done this for sixteen years, and he probably has new ideas. You know that the guy who did The Walking Dead did Marvel Zombies, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, so I wasn't sure. And here's a fun one. EA does not know why they're being hated and are seen as the bad guys. <laughs> well, they're very out of touch company, I suppose. Yeah, well, if you look at Andrew Wilson, he looks like a James Bond boss. And the way he talks, he talks like a freaking android as well. He goes, Oh, people don't play the Elder Games anymore. I'm like, What? And he's like talks in an he talks in interviews where he confuses people. The vice president, one of the vice president of one of the, or something, I can't remember where he's at, but he's been with EA for 25 years and doesn't understand. Well, Spawnwave did a video where he talked about where EA built a lot of games and licenses over the years. And now, like if you slowly look into 2012, they started developing less and less and less games. And they're trying to get you hooked on those microtransactions. And also, I don't know, you're also claiming gambling and are called surprise mechanics, and you're also claiming that um, they're that they're ethical and also they're they're compared to Kinder Eggs and all that other stuff. And also, um, you are also almost went to war with Belgium, and you're, you were under internal investigation. Went to war with Belgium. That's kind of extreme. Uh. Yeah, it is, but... <laughs> 
That's kind of the way I could figure it, the best way I could describe it. But they gave up. Also, another thing that's funny, though, they're like, well, if you look at our EA originals, we help indie developers and everything. And it's great. And not profit goes straight to them. Yeah, but when I see your, but this is me. When I see your name, I don't want to buy it. Like, they don't put loop, they don't put like microtransactions or anything, thank God, but I really don't want to support the company. So, well, to kind of counter your argument, I can understand how EA, at least a certain percentage of maybe people that work for EA, don't understand that, you know, they're hated uh, by a lot of uh, people at the moment. But here's the fact. Um, they do continue to make a lot of money. And yeah. there are a ton of YouTubers constantly complaining about EA. However, there's a lot of goddamn people that probably don't watch those YouTubers. Yeah. And there's also a lot of people that also have like problems too. Like they go, Oh, I just need that one more microtransaction. Well, just yeah, but that 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 aside, I'm just saying for EA yeah. not knowing that they're considered the bad guy, I can understand just for the fact that not everybody is reading all the gaming news all the time. Yeah, In that fact, I do agree with. I most agree people with that. probably that play the EA games have noticed how different they've become and, you know, probably a lot of people have either stopped playing them or they're young kids that are just assume, well, these are how these games are. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, they're willing to spend the money on it. And, you know, maybe they enjoy it and maybe they don't. Definitely the addiction stuff is not cool. And yep. definitely, you know, manipulating people to buy more like we've talked about before, maybe they should do an 18 and up rating. But yep, that's, we've guys. talked to death about that subject. But just for the yep. fact that how EA didn't know that they're hated, I can see how people in the company that probably don't follow everything happening in the gaming space probably yeah. are not aware of it because they're just thinking, like, we're really pushing graphics and like look how great like Madden and FIFA look compared to when they came out on, you know, Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. So Yeah. I think the problem is is that and you know how they have divisions and stuff like that. They should actually have someone look into something and be like and it'd be a waste of money anyway, like just to be like, Hey, uh, how's our reputation looking right now? Well, people keep saying get rid of the microtransactions and Loot box and SDA. No, we need to make that money. Investors will get us. They're they're not gonna they're not gonna do that until they start losing money. That's the bottom yeah. line here. I mean, yeah. we can bitch and moan and you know talk about how unethical they are. However, there's a ton of people buying them, and yeah. as long as they continue to make money, they're gonna just keep doing them. Yeah. I mean, you cannot play the games. I mean, half those people on YouTube that are always constantly complaining about the games, you know, they turn around and buy the games and give the games all these publicity, even though they yeah. hate them. So yeah, no, that's I don't really get their frame yeah, of thought. Yeah, no, one of my friends, I can tell you this, one of my friends is like, I hate Call of Duty Black Ops 4. He did a whole YouTube video about it, and and he's uh, and then I look at him the next day, and I'm like, this game sucks. I'm like, why are you still playing Call of Duty? Why are you playing this? He's like, I don't know why. I'm like, dude, why do you keep buying Call of Duty? I keep telling you not to buy Call of Duty. But what do you do? You buy Call of Duty. You keep saying how much you hate the game. You hate Activision. But you keep buying Call of Duty. What is wrong with you? It's you know? just how it is, man. Like, yeah. And some people, I don't know, some people like the bitch and moan about stuff online. And that's how you get the clicks. Yep. There is a yep. delay on my camera. And that is super weird. <laughs> Okay. But anyway, moving well, you on, get Kyle. My, you, get, you get my point right there, though. Yeah. All right, so here's when it actually happened. Uh, PlayStation Plus game got replaced. The game that was supposed to be on there was 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 the Konami soccer game, uh, P P E S Pro, Pro Evolution Soccer. Yeah, I just did the initials. Yeah. Just to shorten it. With right. uh, Dakota Become Human. 
That was actually a surprise. And it's not just any version of Dakota. It was a deluxe edition that comes with heavy, heavy rain. And it was a last minute thing, too. Detroit Be Human is, that's like an interactive movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's very, it's, it's, it's very weird that that actually happened last minute. I never heard of anything like that happening. It must have been either, some sort of licensing thing, especially with like a sports title. Yeah, with either Konami or it could have been like, people were like really weren't happy with the, with the soccer game. So it was either that or people weren't really happy. With Do you the, know if Pro Evolution Soccer actually has like official teams that are part of, you know, actual FIFA? No, I actually don't know that. Yeah. I do know, like, I do know these games do profit without without microtransactions, and Konami actually makes a lot of money with it. Yeah, I mean, people like sports games, and you yeah, know, they're fun yeah. when they're done really well. Yeah, know? yeah, no, like I remember, like hilariously, like it now it's during Metal Gear Survival, literally Konami made profit and literally made expectations. I was like, well, as much as I don't like Konami now, I will say this, they didn't do something very, they didn't, like, they didn't talk about Metal Gear Survive, but they did make money. And they didn't go, well, we didn't delay, we didn't do this or that, you know, or laying off people, so. But Detroit Become Human, that's a very good choice, though. I haven't played it yet, and I actually just downloaded it. So, maybe PlayStation's probably going to do a new trend where they're like, maybe we should put an interesting game and complement with the, like, downloadable only game. Maybe. So, well, anyway, we I've seen this movie, but Chris haven't. We'll review it next week. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home costume got added to PS4. It's pretty Spider cool. PS4. Yeah, no, I love the Spider-Man. I love both of those costumes. So, especially the new one, I was like, oh, wow, that looks really good. It combines almost every good element of Spider-Man costumes. So, yeah, and here's a good one. Netflix revealed the... Gave a reveal for not the reveal trailer, but a reveal for, you know, like the fir a first look at Henry Cavill's, uh, you know, like you see everything for his yeah. Witcher costume and the cast. I don't know uh, too Witcher. much about Witcher, uh, except for he's in the Soul Calibur Six. Yep. So. I don't know much too much about Witcher either, but I do know they're based off of books and stuff. I know that. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably give it a watch. Just because I like Henry Cavill. Yeah. See what it's like. Actually, what's really weird is I forgot to add this in, but uh, since we're on the topic of Henry Cavill, uh, during Entertainment Weekly, Weekly, um, Entertainment Weekly, in the paragraphs it said former Superman during the reveal. I'm like, oh. Well, doesn't I thought that was news? Like, it seems like he's not gonna be Superman anymore. Uh. Now how Warner Brothers said it, they're like, oh, we did not do this. And, I'm like, and it was really weird. It was just something like, it, it was just sounded like, oh, we did not break our relationship or anything. It sounded like they didn't break a relationship, but it didn't reveal like, oh, he's not Superman anymore. Right. So that's the weird thing. And then he goes on, he goes on Instagram the day he, that announcement happens. He puts a doll of his Superman up and goes, and you hear music. And I'm like, you see what I mean? Like, it wasn't so transparent. I'm confused. Well, this is trolling, maybe. Yeah. But anyway, next thing is Bill and Ted 3 Face the Music is happening. It has begun filming. That's very cool. Uh, I like Bill and Ted 1 and 2 a lot. They're great movies. Yeah, they're amazing movies. I love them. They're her, they're hysterical. Like, if you ever want to see anything from the '90s or the '80s, you gotta watch those movies. They were just it was like it was like it was a movie that was just meant to be made for fun. Definitely the first one's probably my favorite. The second one is cool too, but the second one kind of goes like more supernatural. Yeah, hello, they hello they meet they made they made. They became best friends with the Grim Reaper. Yeah. Come on. So Come on. I'm interesting what this one's going to be. Uh, I don't know um, who's going to be uh, 
you know, the guy that gave them the uh, time machine to begin with, like, if they're going to have, like, a new Rufus or if they're going to recast Rufus or what. His, uh, wait, 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 wait. We're going to do it. We're going to do it this way. We're not going to recast George. We're not going to re We're not recasting George Carlin. We're going to have a Rufus Jr. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know if they would get, like, another famous comedian to, you know, be, like, the new you know, time traveler guy. Um, yeah. But, um, I really, I'm excited for this. It looks great. You know what? You, you want to tell you something? Have you seen the behind the scenes stuff yet? Not really. Keanu Reeves shaved his entire beard off just for this movie. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. I would have loved it if he still had it. It, it, it would have still looked good for his rock and roll persona. Maybe. It would have been so good. Although I would have laughed harder if he just comes back with the beard by the end of the movie. Well, I, I heard like the movie's like premise is like they still haven't uh, wrote the song that like saves the world. Or, so the whole, not just the world, unites the universe. Right, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> we are not making this up. We are not making this up. But uh, yeah, I, I'm excited for this. I can't wait to see it next year. I think it's gonna be a fun movie. It's gonna end. I hope it. En I hope it ends well. Yeah. Anyway, Sony is now considering buying studios ahead of PS Five. That makes sense. I wonder who they would buy. I mean, Mi Microsoft has been buying studios lately too. Yeah, and it makes sense for them to start buying studios because, like, oh shit, they bought some good studios. Well, some. Well, Not Sony all. has like their in-house studios that you know. They have been there forever. Um, yep. Yeah, it's I mean, interesting. They bought, they bought they Sucker would. Punch like eight years ago. Yeah. Like right when, just not eight years ago, like five years ago. That was the last time they bought it because that was when, that was when uh, Infamous uh, Second Son came out. Right. So. I mean, they own a yeah. lot already. Yeah. Um, like they own Naughty Dog. Sucker Punch, like you said, uh, Santa Monica Studios, uh, you know, uh, Japan Studios. Yep. A lot of people are thinking Blue Point. I'm like, nah, Blue Point does a lot of remakes. They haven't done. That's what they usually do. And then they're like, oh, what about uh, what about what about Insomniac? And I'm like, they'd rather be independent. Yeah, it, Insomniac was owned by Sony at one time, but then was not owned by Sony, so it, it's hard to think what studio they would buy that I can't really think of anybody that they have a working or relationship with that they don't own that studio besides for like Insomniac. Level 5. Yeah, but Level 5 does a shit ton of stuff with Nintendo now too. Yeah, no, I was just saying Level 5 could be one, but I don't think they don't want, I don't think they don't want to lose that Switch Get on the switch, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um someone just said like Sega, and I'm like, nope. Yeah, I don't think that's happening. Because that'd, that'd be, be very a big interesting that'd be big. That bid. Because they did they don't because they just don't own Sega does not just own Sega, they also own Atlas too. So I mean Sony I know used to have a pretty large stake in Square Enix, so that possibly oh. could be a contender. That would be such a huge acquisition, though. It wouldn't be as big as you would think. Um, but, it, yeah, it would be a lot of money. Like, don't forget, like, they also have Square Enix Europe, too. Yeah. So if they bought them, they would buy... They just bought Square Enix. They're also buying Square Enix Europe, too. Well, which yeah. used to be as, Eidos. As the whole Eidos, sorry. company. Um, yeah. That's what I was trying to say. That's a big. That's kind of. If you think about it, that's pretty big. It would be weird if they bought like somebody like Capcom. Although I, I could see Microsoft going after Capcom instead of Sony. I believe it. Um, but I think Capcom would rather be like doing what they want to do now instead of just being exclusive. After Ke Ken Ke uh, Inafune left that company, thank God. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know who they could possibly buy. Uh, there's, I'm sure there's a lot they could, they could even buy, like, some, like, you know, indie studio that 
nobody's ever heard of except for like one game that like a lot of people like. Yeah, that could happen. I mean, look at uh, look at Microsoft. Yeah, they bought Minecraft. And yeah, it's true. Where is it? Like, like I'm just saying, indie studio, not nobody out of nowhere. You know? I, you know, I would say Ninja Theory, but Microsoft already bought Ninja Theory, so. Yeah, that happened. Yeah. It it will be interesting to see uh what they actually end up do buying. Yeah. But it doesn't make there... sense for them to build up uh their own in house production. They did do an in house production. Um I think it was Big Robot Battle or something. They were the they were they made they were made specifically for uh PlayStation All Star. Yeah. And that game flopped. Yes it did. Yeah. But anyway, let's get to trailer All right. real quick. Jumanji the next Jumanji the next level. Yeah. Uh what what did you yeah. think of Jumanji? Are you a fan? Or I to be honest with you, I wasn't really too keen on the first, the second Jumanji thing. I was just like, do we really need a sequel to Jumanji? And then I took I took my girlfriend at the time on a date to go see that movie for Valentine's Day, and we saw it. And yeah, it was I I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed it. So I'm kind of glad there is a sequel. But I do like that uh The Rock is acting like Danny DeVito, and it's hilarious. And we got Murdoch from uh, Lethal Weapons, or is that what he's called? I can't yeah, remember. it's Mar Murdoch. Yeah, Murdoch. Yeah, yeah. Pla being who's now in his little guy, so it's kind of like really funny that they have the opposite roles. And um, Fridge is like, oh, man, I'm a fat old dude. I'm, like, enjoying that. So, like, and the system's all glitched up. So it's, like, a little interest, another interesting premise right there, too. So they're not just in a game. They're in a very super glitchy game. So. I, I was surprised to see Danny DeVito and, uh, you know, Danny Glover in this movie i was like wait what why are these old men in this movie all of a sudden yeah well jamonji made a lot of movie money and they're like hey let's get some legendary old people i guess <laughs> i guess kevin hart and uh dwayne johnson were like Dwayne johnson's like i really want to try to play danny devito and kevin hart's like i really want to try to play donald glover i mean danny glover, danny glover my dad <laughs> yeah, I want to play a very old black dude. Yeah, and he they did a good job. They seated on that in many levels. And Jack Black's like, can I be a can I be a jock? Can I be a jock guy for once instead of being a girl? Let me really. It really shows how good his acting chops are. Believe it or not. I mean, we'll see with the actual movie, but uh, yeah. it could be terrible. It could be bad. I mean, with Mardock, it's like. You know, Danny Glover, it's like, man, he was too old for that shit and Lethal Weapon. Now he's really too old for this stuff. But, you know, he's... he was in, um, believe it or not, he was actually in that movie. Sorry, sorry to bother you. I've never seen it. It's on, I think it's on Hulu, but he's the dude that introduces, why don't you use your white voice? My what? Hey there, Mr. Donovan. This is right from Regal Vision. Was that movie made by the guy that made Thank You for Smoking? No. Okay. No, it's a that movie is a real good commentary on on uh on U.S. consumerism and everything. yeah, it's about like telemarketing, right? Oh no, it goes beyond that. Okay, I know that. that. I I get it. I get that, but that's like the basic uh premise, right? It's like about yeah. telemarketing. Yeah, and once you get to the like to that like see once you get to the choice, you're gonna be like, oh my Jesus God! Hmm. Just trust me. Yeah. Well, okay, so Jumanji so, is weird. Yeah. Jumanji's always been weird. Okay, so um let's go to uh Avengers has failed to beat beat Avatar with the re-release. It's technically still in theaters when it re-released. So there were some theaters that pulled it out, believe it or not. Yeah. But I think, you know, maybe it won't catch Avatar at the moment, but I can see them re-releasing it, like, maybe, like, a year later to be, like, experience Avengers all over again and, you know, oh, IMAX or something, you know. No, experience the 
experience the thrilling finale on the big screen all over again right before phase four kicks in the yeah because don't world. forget avatar they had a re-release you know yeah and I it re-released like a year later and made like 30 36 million dollars so i actually did see the re-release it was definitely worth seeing that stanley tribute that should have been at the end of that movie but everything else wasn't really worth it. I just wanted to see the movie again anyway. I only saw it once, so. Right. So I was like, oh, cool. I'll go see the movie again. So yeah. if you saw it for a third time, it's not really worth it. Everything's going to be on the Blu-ray, so. Yeah. So, yep. Uh, Attack on Titan season four will be the last season. I heard that the manga is pretty close to ending, so. This makes sense. They just finished season three, I heard. Yep. And I know a lot of people really like season three. Yep. I don't really do. watch Attack on Titan just because, you know, I'm I'm not into it. Uh, <laughs> Jesus God, did that guy, did that mom get eaten? Oh, yeah, yeah, those, yeah. Those, those things are horrifying. And when I saw, like, the one lady get eaten in the first episode, I was like, nope. And just turned it off. Jesus Christ, man, are you scary? Yeah. Like that's pretty much that's pretty much what your expression was to me. And uh, not not exactly. It was kind of like, uh, this is like this is like really like horrifying and gross. I'm not really into this. Here's a good question: What's worse, the violence in Helsing or this? The thing is, the violence in Helsing is like over the top. This is like gruesome. It, it's okay. hard to explain the difference, but like, like I can't really. I don't really like seeing like. You know, innocent people getting like you know eaten by monsters in like a gruesome way. And Helsing, you know, for the most part, he's like fighting like other vampires, or he's fighting you know something weird, or he's fighting Nazis. So in that it's like okay, this is like fun. Alcard is like super over the top. This is like unrealistic. But then like Attack on Titan, it's like two children are crying as they like watch their mother get eaten by a monster and then you hear her bones crack and stuff so I yeah mean, it's completely different <laughs> yeah but the good thing is what i like about it is like they let that thing go through their mind for the rest of their lives so they're like they they became adults and joined the army so. yeah i know it's like a whole revenge thing yeah but then it evolves into something so much more I mean, I've I read some stuff of Attack on Titan, like, like I've read some of the chapters. Reading it and, and, like, actually watching it are totally different things. Like, watching it is, like, just, like, a little bit too much for me because of, like, the sounds and everything, and I'm like, oh, God. Like, yeah. No, you'd be like, oh, God, if you heard it on my sound bar. You'd be like, oh, my God. Yeah, but, yeah, I'm not really a big fan, but I know a lot of people really like it. And yeah. I know season three was really good, especially since a few people that I know that do like the show, they were disappointed in season two for some reason. But Season uh, two was very disappointing because there was a lot of running around and not really much story developing besides, like, this guy was a Titan, this guy was a Titan, and this person was a Titan. Yeah, I heard it was a lot of, like, exposition. Yeah, but season three kind of gets into, like, the lore of, like, the world and stuff, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So, yeah, well, that's it for right there. And one more thing. Yakuza 6 actor got suspended for attending a party that's linked to organized crime. We This sort of similar happened to the guy that was the villain for Judgment. I mean, so. I don't really know too much about this, Kyle. So why is this a big deal? <laughs> well, you know how they are. Well, he got suspended, so he can't do much of... His acting career, but the good thing is he's just suspended, which is yeah, different from like the drug from like getting arrested. So they're not too sure what was going on or what he was doing there. From what I that's under, what I, okay. From what I understand, Japan, and this might not be a case anymore, but I know a lot of TV executives in Japan apparently are supported by the yakuza, or the yakuza has some sort of control on the media. I mean, uh, you could tell because there's like a thing in Japan where they don't want to show people with like fingers cut off because it's what Yakuza does. 
and I've heard yep. like things that TV executives in Japan have fingers cut off. So I don't really know what the deal is because if it's like an actor in, you know, Japan, I would assume possibly they would cross paths with the Yakuza if all this stuff is true about the Yakuza being the entertainment industry in Japan. Yep. So that that sounds like weird to me that it would be a big deal. Yeah, what well, no, I just figured it'd be interesting to bring that up. Like I was like, huh. Similar situation happened and other things happening again. But he's like suspended, not like you're fired. Yeah, well it know? wasn't a drug thing though. No, it wasn't. Drug, drugs and, and like affiliating with gangsters, I think, are two totally different things in Japan. Yeah, they are, they totally are. Well, anyway, we got through all the news. I'm sorry about that. Now we're on to the main topic of the day. We're going to talk about our experiences with the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. So, which one Let's do you want to talk about first, Kyle? What do you think? What do you think? What do you feel like you wanted to talk about first? First, the thing, the thing that came out first, or do you want to just do the Super Nintendo first? Well, Sega technically came first, so... Yeah. Kyle, what was your experience with this guy? Well, I did not have that one. I had the Model 2 version when I grew up. So, that... Oh, uh, man, that was such a fun system. So, what uh, was your first game on Model 2 Sega Genesis? It's got... I can't remember. It was either a Sega... It was either Sonic or... I just played a lot of Disney games, which was Aladdin and uh, Lion King. Oh my god, those games were hard as hell back in the day. You had to work yourself to win to beat those games. Yeah. And well, yeah, go on. Also, yeah, and then um, I also remember a game I used to play a lot, and I finally it was it was like one of the first games I beat was actually the Tiny Toons video games. <laughs> and that was that was actually really fun. Yeah, I've never played Tiny Toons, but I've heard those games are really good. Yeah, and Konami made, actually made that game. Yeah, they also made the Animaniacs game as well. Yeah. Like, that was back when licensed games were actually were pretty good. Yeah, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Not all of them. I'm just saying, war I'm just saying, like, they were, they were, they had some qualities, you know? I mean, for every good one, there's, like, just as many bad ones. Um, That's true. So, I guess my experience with the Sega Genesis was, uh, I was really young, little little tiny boy, even smaller than I am now. Um, you know, at my aunt's house, and my cousin had Sega Genesis playing Sonic uh, the Hedgehog, the first one, and playing a shit ton of that game, really liking it. Uh, never actually owned my own Sega Genesis as a kid until, you know, I, I briefly got one when I was a kid, but... It was it was my cousin's, and it was so old that it literally like exploded when like I brought it home and like plugged it into the TV. And then it literally after, exploded and blew up the house. It, it didn't yeah. like blow up the house, but like it just like it like stopped working, and I'm pretty sure there was some smoke. But I was pretty little, so I don't remember exactly what was the deal with it, but. <laughs> Something weird yeah. like that happened, but the games that I've probably played the most on Sega Genesis, of course, the Sonic games, uh, you know, Sonic 1 and 2 definitely have played a lot of, have played a lot of Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles now, but however, as a kid, it was literally just Sonic 1 and 2 and Sonic CD, because uh, my friend Mike, uh, he had Sega Genesis, and we used to play Sonic CD over his house all the time, as well as uh, we played Maximum Carnage on Sega Genesis. That game was great. We used to play Spawn on Sega Genesis. That was a great one, too. Uh, I used to play Shinobi a shit ton on Sega Genesis, uh, especially Shinobi 3, which seems like the only one Sega is willing to re-release for some reason but it is the one i know pretty well and also i would play a shit ton of streets of rage 2 as well as streets of rage 1 uh i didn't really find out until high school that there was a streets of rage 3 i was like wait there's a streets of rage 3 what is this yeah yeah that's the same thing with me when you find out later yeah like the good thing is that like now you can re-experience this stuff now in the Genesis, 
on a nice little collection. Oh God. On a nice little collection, which is really nice. Yeah. So it's uh, pretty cool. Um, definitely the Genesis uh, collection for like, you know, all current available consoles is definitely worth getting if you want to play Sega Genesis yeah. stuff. Uh, definitely cheaper than getting one of these boys. Uh, this is the Model 1 Sega Genesis. Um, yeah, I actually bought this. I'll be right back. Uh, I'll okay. be right back. I got to fix my thing. Okay, whatever. So I, online. I actually bought this from my friend Bill, uh, who has been on the podcast before, because I always wanted a Sega Genesis of my own that actually worked. So I got this from him. I had to actually do some restoration of it. Um, and, you know, it still works pretty good. Uh, I've never really modified this system. It does have, you know, the old school hookups. But, you know, there are converter boxes you can buy that will let you play it on a modern TV. This definitely is meant to be played on, you know, a CRT TV if you have that available to you. But... I've had a lot of fun with this. I don't really actually play on this system that often, uh, but there are a few games that don't have digital releases that I have that once in a while I'll use this bad boy to play. Uh, definitely like games like Truxton, which are pretty good. <laughs> uh, that's not the classic game room because you cannot talk about Sega Genesis without talking about Truxton. And you cannot talk about Sega Genesis without talking about Musha. I do not own Musha because it was a super expensive game. However, there was a digital version on uh, Nintendo Wii, which I do own, and I've played a shit ton of that game. And yeah, it's amazing. I don't know why it's not on the Genesis collection. Maybe if they do a volume two, that would be definitely one they uh, should add on to. But anyway, Kyle, what, what other games do you want to mention on Sega Genesis before we move on? Ooh, let's talk about all the Fantasy Star games. Except for three. <laughs> I, I've, I've really only played Fantasy Star 4. Um, no, that's a good one. But uh, it's definitely that, a game that I intend to maybe one day try to finish. We should, uh, well, because of the Sega Genesis collection on PS4, we should definitely uh, play Streets of Rage together one of these days. Yeah. Like, that would be a fun idea. I mean, Streets of Rage 4 is coming out pretty soon. Yeah. When I told you about that, you're like, wait, what? Are you real with me? <laughs> no, I am not shitting with you. I was like, what year is this? Because I found out about Samurai Showdown, too. I was like, finding out all these games coming out at once. I was like, what year is this? Yeah. But anyway, uh, so what other Sega Genesis games? Can you if, I remember correct, if I remember correctly, games that I remembered... Ooh, you know what game I got really addicted to? And this is my cocaine. Game set. Uh, Dr. Lobotnik's Bean Mean Machine. <laughs> nice. Well, in Japan, it was called Puyo Puyo, and it was like a tet it was like Japanese Tetris. And my dad used to own a business, so I remembered I would always sit in the back during the weekend in the back of the corner of the shop and just watch that, and also during weekends watch Power Rangers go. Very small CRT TV. So during the mor morning, I'd be watching Power Rangers. And, and, a, and by the way, it was color, so it was amazing to watch. Nice. So, so it wasn't like it wasn't like one of those bad. It was very good, clear tell. It was very clear too. It was amazing. Okay, Kyle, but Sega anyway, Genesis games. <laughs> yeah, back to that. I was just going. Sorry, I was getting. I was getting very nostalgic. Sorry. Yeah. God, about those days, but anyway, I would play hours and hours of that game. Just trying to beat that game and trying to get get to beat Robotnik at the end. Right. So, okay. actually, actually, hilariously, hilariously, speaking of games, like I used to, where my dad moved his work, actually, it was right next to a game store. So the store owner knew my dad, and my dad, and he knew me. He would actually let me borrow games from the store and play on the Sega Genesis. Nice. Yeah, so just a little memory for the Sega Genesis days. Yeah, um, a few other games I'd like to mention. These are games I played later on, but uh, me and my friend Gabe have had a lot of fun playing them. Uh, E-SWAT uh, is one that we really got into one time hanging out, uh, as well as Vector Man. 
And, oh, I love Vector Man 1 too. And me and my friend Al uh, actually discovered this game uh, probably maybe like two years ago. And we really like thought it was really awesome. And we're kind of surprised like nobody talks about it too often. But Beyond Oasis is really cool as well. That's and actually- it is available on the Genesis collection. So yeah. it's like Zelda. Uh, but, you know, it kind of like with an Arabian type of... Uh, setting to it but yeah beyond oasis is actually a really solid uh rpg slash adventure game that is really good on sega genesis as well collections really do a good job of getting you like stuff that you would never think of playing you know yeah definitely like like all the shining force games are on there and they were kind of like genesis fire emblem games and yeah a little bit um so I guess uh, anything else on Sega Genesis, or you want to move on to Super Nintendo? I guess we can move on to Super Nintendo. I think I got a, enough. Actually, wait, one game that we should talk about. And okay. no, no, we're not talking about uh, Ultra Beasts, Golden <laughs> Axe. I'm not the biggest fan of Golden Axe. Uh, definitely like Streets of Rage more. But if you have a lot to say about Golden Axe, go for it. It's a fun little game. I'll just say it's like a beat 'em up. You get you get to be an elf. A sexy barbarian woman, a sexy barbarian man, and you know you get the fight stuff. I, I, I definitely... think that you have to chase around those little gnomes, like after you beat like the levels to get like your bonuses and stuff. That kind yeah, of annoys the crap out of me. Yeah, um, you do. But they did make it. They and surprisingly, I only knew about one going next, and surprisingly, they made three of them. Apparently, the third one was exclusive to Japan. They're only in compilations here in America. I did not know that about number three. Um, yeah. I have a lot of number one, though. Yeah, it's two. it's on. If you watch, if you go to the back of Sonic's Gem Collection, they actually tell you that. It's interesting. Like they have a lot of interesting bonuses on there. Nice. Yeah. So, like, I actually looked, read some of it. I was like, eh, why not? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get to that Super Nintendo, Chris. Super Nintendo. Or the Whoa, SNES. bam! This is my original one from when I was a kid. Please, not yellow. Hello. But uh, this is the mighty Super Nintendo. Uh, I've played so many games with this. Um, this is model SN-001, rated for DC 10V, 850 milliamps of pure power. But anyway, Kyle, what Super Nintendo games do you like? Oh, I love playing Super Mario World. I love... I've been trying to get into it. I just never had the time for it. But Mario RPG now, since I have that mini collection. Right. uh, Played a lot of Donkey Kong back in the day because it was on, like, Donkey Kong. You mean Donkey Kong Country? Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't own it back in the day. I I played it at a friend's house. But now having that mini... Mini next there brings back such nostalgic memories. Yeah, like, like Kirby's All Star, uh, Kirby's like Kirby's All Star. That was a fun one. I love that one. Nice. Like I made so many. I and then like, and then like eventually maybe play Earthbound. Who knows? Since not as in, you could easily get it now. Well, I've played. So what about you? I played shit ton of games on this thing. Um. You know, Donkey Kong Country, uh, you know, all, all of them are good, but I've played, I played Donkey Kong Country 2 a lot. It was actually my first game on Super Nintendo, as well as Mario All-Star. That's probably the Mario game I played the most on this Super Nintendo besides for Mario World, but I did have Mario All-Stars first. Um... Other games that I've played a shit ton of on this thing are, you know, uh, Spider-Man. Uh, there, there's like a Spider-Man game based on the animated series. I used to play that all the time. It was made by LJN, but, you know, every once in a while they make a good game, and I like that Spider-Man game. But I'm sure people on the internet will tell me why it sucks. Anyway, um, Secret of Mana. Love that game. Uh would be dumb not to mention Chrono Trigger. My friend Mike loves Chrono Trigger. It's his favorite game of all times. Yep. Plays it almost every year. 
Uh, yep. So many games on this thing uh, that I've played a, a lot of. Uh, you know, of course, Zelda Link to the Past. Uh, Super Metroid, of course. Um, Secret of Evermore is a game I really like on this system. It doesn't really get talked about too much. It is kind of like Secret of Mana, but it's like kind of like creepy. Uh, you're like a boy and you have a dog, and that's kind of your party, and you're kind of like in this post-apocalyptic world. It's pretty cool. Uh, man, so, so many good ones. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighter. I, I was played, there when you got all those games. Yes, but before I actually got them, uh, I did play a shit ton of Tournament Fighter and Ninja Turtles in time for Super Nintendo. Those are great games. Uh, you know, Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, what about Shaq Fu? I don't have Shaq Fu, but I have Michael God Jordan, it, every Chaos in the Windy City. Shaq Fu. Yeah. <laughs> um, man, you know, I own not, not a shit ton of Super Nintendo games, but I own enough. I have a pretty decent library. Uh, Yoshi's Island. Is a game I played a ton of when I was a kid. Uh, oh yeah, I remember playing that a lot. It was yeah. actually the first video game I ever beat too when I was a kid. Mm. Yeah, I remember sitting in the dark with my little sister and my grandma because, like, my grandma was staying over our house and she's just like, "Where is everybody?" I'm like, we "We're just playing Super Nintendo," and I beat it. <laughs> uh. Um, what what other? other games did i play on this thing i mean you know Donkey Kong country 2 i mentioned already but man i spent so much time on that uh you know that bramble level where it has like the really cool music and there's like all the thorns and stuff and you have to like shoot the can cannons all over yep. the place that yep. blew my mind when i was a kid getting there uh. um uh, you know, it's actually a good, good game that I play once in a while on the Super Nintendo. What's that? Star Fox. Oh, yeah. Star Fox is great, actually. That's definitely... Even if I don't get too far, I just love playing. I just, even at just that first level, I go... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, Corneria is like Super Nintendo theme. is pretty awesome. It's... Yeah, I'm just... I'm just like going bounce in my head like back and forth like... Dead out. Yeah, um, man. I think it's probably one of the best songs ever on a Super Nintendo. Yeah, and you know, one cool thing about the Super Nintendo is you got the game Super Game Boy, and you can play Game Boy games. Played a ton of Donkey Kong Land on Super Nintendo, as well as uh, Pokemon on oh, Super God, Nintendo. Pokemon. And Mario Land, too. Oh, my God. But I know those are not Super Nintendo games technically, but you can play them on Super Nintendo, so I'm gonna mention them. He just he, he just found a loophole. That's all. Yeah, that's the best way to say it. Um, yeah, you know about you do know about the uh, Game Boy Player too, right? Yes, I do know about the Game Boy Player too. Okay, well, yeah. sure because I know that one had a built-in link cable. Yeah, it was clear. Let me just take one quick look at my library just to see if. There's something else I need to mention. Yeah, I get it. Really, Kyle? You're not even talking. I don't even know what to say. Okay. Well, two two I'm other games. I'm trying to look up some games here just to see. Well, two other games that I actually played. Uh, Hook from the movie. Played a shit ton of that game, and that game is amazing. And even though it's hard as hell, uh, X-Men uh, Mutant Apocalypse, pretty good too. But yeah. those were two games I forgot to mention. You know a game I forgot to mention on here? Now I see it on here on the list. What's that? Final Fan um I played a little bit of Final Fantasy VI. I've tried to play that game three separate times and I've never got through it because I always get bored. Tch. Punch out. Never played Super Nintendo Punch Out. Dude, it's really different, I can tell you that. It plays like regular Punch Out, and then 
Super Castlevania, which I, I played a lot with my cousin. I actually played a good amount of Super Castlevania too. Uh, can't beat it. Uh, the castle is really hard. I yeah. never really bothered to get. You know, you know what I actually did. You know what I actually did last year with the Super Nintendo Mini. What's that? Well, me and my cousin, we we were with our we were, me and my cousin we we're like we we're like we we're like near our thirties. We just decided to sit down and play Super Nintendo, and drink and has a couple of drinks and everything. And his mother looked at us and goes, "You guys look like children again, just watching you people, watching you two playing video games on a Super Super Nintendo." Hmm. It was kind of magical too. Nice, it's kind of a good moment. Like I, those are things I cherish, because you know, be, being like a kid from the '90s and your first Nintendo system with a 16-bit console, like that's what I love about it. It's, it's it makes you get together sometimes. Yeah. Oh wait, here's a good one. Here's a good one I forgot to t- talk about. Street Fighter 2. Oh, yeah, my, my experience with Street Fighter was more like actually playing the arcade machine like than actually playing it on Super Nintendo. Uh, that's true. That's the yeah. same thing with me. I used to play it. I think it was in the Howl Bowling Alley at one point. And oh, I, yeah. I, I think it was also in that place, Fuzzies, as well. That used to be. No, I town. remember it was in Fuzzies all the time. Yeah, so was Mortal Kombat and uh, that six player X-Men, X-Men game. Yeah. Okay, now we're getting crazy here. Yeah. But the point is, we played like a lot of these games. Right. So, like, we could go on and on about everything about that. But, you know, I think we got a good gist of the collection and everything. Right. But you know, you know. But um, I guess we'll just get to the ending of the podcast. So, uh, have you done any watching? Have you done any playing? Yeah, I've actually been watching uh, Even Gillian on Netflix. About ten episodes in. Uh, it's been about ten years since I've seen the original dub, and you know. Uh, but I probably am gonna be doing a side little podcast talking to my friend who really likes even gillian comparing it to you know this new netflix dub compared to the old dub but i will say i do like the new voices um especially since uh even gillian's kind of like a mess up show and because like the main characters actually sound like kids now and it definitely like is like oh my god like this seems like even more horrendous that they sound like children because you know they are children they're 14 yeah but you know it, it's a really good show and i was surprised like from like the first episode i find my, i found myself actually getting like back into it just like wanting to continue to watch but you know i'm like oh but i i have to do stuff so <laughs> you know the first day i watched it you know i ended up watching like three episodes in a row and i was like oh holy crap i gotta go to bed <laughs> Because I got responsibilities, but um, yeah, yeah. and finally uh, finished Trials of Cold Steel. Beat it, uh, for real. I released a review on the channel, if anybody cares. Um, Yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much it, man. So what's up with you? Well, I've been playing a couple games here and there. Uh, just, Just, I've been playing Mario Maker as of recently. Because I just came out Friday. So I've been working on a first question slash review on it right now. And at the same time, I'm also learning how to use the, the Vega program. So started realizing I made over two hours of footage. But thank God I realized it's so early. So, But I really want to review Mario Maker. Because I love, I really do love the game. Like I love making levels. I love the little bit of stuff improvements they did. I would, but for I think for an early, early thoughts... Don't make your levels with with the control sticks on the big screen. Make it with the go in handheld mode. That's the easiest way yeah, to do it. Yeah, I've, I've heard similar stuff like that to Mario Maker, but it looks fun. It looks like, you know, Mario Maker. Yeah, and then um, what I've been wa- watching. Hmm, let me see. Let's see. I'm already all caught up with Rise of the Shield Hero, and let's see. I'll probably watch it tonight. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, I started checking out a Netflix show, actually. I watched, like, two episodes of it. It's called Seven Seeds. Is this, like, a live-action or animated show? Anime. Really? Yeah, it's about these humans that are stuck on an island in a world where Earth has changed. Mm. And they're, like, in the first episode, they're, like, stranded on an island, 
and like there's a guy who's like from from like who shows up like from like the Edo Pierce of Samurai, and he's like trying to take down all these like praying mantises that are like bigger than humans. Nice. It's pretty good. It's only third, third first so far. The first part is up right now, and sounds up my alley. I'll definitely yeah. have to check that out. Yeah, it's uh so like it's a slow start. I checked out Young Justice actually last night. First yes, I, I actually watched the first three episodes uh too. I guess we'll have to talk about. I guess we'll have to make it a powwow tomorrow. To our first impressions and a review, yeah. like a quick, quick first impression. You know what I mean? I mean. <laughs> so far, so good. Uh, man, Young Justice version of Guy Gardner is so annoying. Yes, I know. And he's, Brooklyn, he's from Brooklyn. Yeah, he's got a New York accent. I remember when I first showed him, I, I was like, no, don't make him a Justice League member. And then, the, like, Hal Jordan and John Stewart are like, no! Yeah. I'm like... <laughs> Why couldn't we not get Kyle? Why? Why could not we get Kyle Ryan or whatever? Big Barda as well, which is yeah. kind of cool. Uh, she's yeah. evil, though. I was like, oh, shit. She's, bad she's always been evil until she gets saved by somebody that like showed her more kindness. Believe yeah. Right. I wonder yeah. if we'll see Mr. Miracle, but uh, definitely enjoying this version of Granny Goodness as well. Yeah, being like an, apple, an evil Apple CEO. Yeah. Oh, Garanti knows best, and I'm just like, well, I keep forgetting that, um, like God, I forgot that Godfrey was like in cahoots with Dark Side. So I was like, oh wait, no, I forgot about that. Yeah, I saw the ending. I was like, it's one of those moments sometimes where it's like, how stupid are you people sometimes? <laughs> especially with Lex, like especially with Lex, like especially with Lex Luthor. They're like, no, I'm a good guy now. I'm like. In the ways of Superman. Oh come on, Scott! It's Lex freaking Luthor. Yeah. But that's what I've been doing. I'm trying to. I've been looking out for other shows to watch. I just haven't found anything to call my itch. Oh, I've been watching Aggressuga, uh, Aggressuga on Netflix as well. What is that? The one with the with the red panda. The one that's done by the Hello Pig. Oh right, I thought the show. I probably can't say it right, but I thought that show was called Anetsuko, but I can yeah, be we, wrong. We're sorry we're butching the name, okay? We know what the show is. But yeah, season two just came out. First two episodes are pretty good so far. Nice. I like I I just when I first saw it, I was like, I'm my hate and as soon as I saw the trailer where she sang heavy metal, I was and acting like a crazy person. I was like, Okay, you got yourself one episode. It was 15 minutes. I was like, okay, two episodes. All right, you are a good show. Yeah. And then I watched the whole thing. Nice. Yeah, so I recommend that show to anybody that needs to watch it. But um, that's been the podcast. I'm Chris. I'm dumbass now. <laughs> this, I'm Kyle. I've been Kyle. Happy 4th of July, everybody. Don't blow up uh, your neighborhood. And wait, uh, wait, 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 until next time. Wait, wait, wait. And don't forget to leave the cookies out for Captain America. Right. Oh, my God. All right. Have a good night, everybody.